Welcome once again to Commander by Danon. Today we continue our series building decks around the new legendary creatures from The Brothers War. Last video, we had a deck built around Mishra claimed by Gix. Today we're looking at his heroic brother, Urza, Lord Protector. Which is something of a misnomer, right? Urza was just as much of a villain as Mishra, but history is written by the victors. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly ask you to like and subscribe. I've been very happy with the growth this channel has had so far, and I'm excited to see where we're going. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash One of the tiers is specifically set up for Commander. For only $25, I will build you a custom Commander deck based around your specifications, and even do a deck video on it. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. Urza Lord Protector is a 3-mana 2-4 legendary human artificer. He makes it so that instants, sorceries, and artifacts we cast are one generic mana less to cast. Additionally, if we both own and control Urza Lord Protector and an artifact named the Mightstone and Weakstone, we can pay 7 mana, exile them, then meld them into Urza Planeswalker. But we can only activate this ability as a sorcery. The Mightstone and Weakstone, despite having an odd name, is a single 5 mana legendary artifact. When it enters the battlefield, we get to choose one of two abilities. Either we draw two cards, or target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. Additionally, we can tap the Mightstone and Weakstone to add two colorless mana to our mana pool. Urza Planeswalker, the melded version of the cards, starts with seven loyalty. Additionally, we can activate Urza Planeswalker's loyalty abilities twice on each of our turns. There are a total of five loyalty abilities, which is a lot to get through, so I'll just summarize them. The first one makes it so that instant sorceries and artifacts cost two less to cast this turn, and we gain two life. The second one lets us draw two cards and then discard one. The third ability creates two 1-1 soldier artifact creature tokens. The fourth ability exiles a non-land permanent. The final one says that artifacts and planeswalkers we control gain indestructible until end of turn then destroy all non-land permanents. But that last one costs 10 loyalty, so we cannot activate it the turn Urza Planeswalker is melded. Urza is a very powerful Planeswalker, as he should be. It takes 15 mana and two separate cards to put him into play. Now, for Mishra's video, I decided to ignore budget concerns. But Urza, I felt, needed to be reined in. After all, Urza Lord High Artificer is considered to be one of the strongest and saltiest commanders in EDH, and while Urza Lord Protector isn't quite as powerful, he does have the potential to be broken. So I wanted to go with a budget build for Urza Lord Protector. The problem is, he's pre-ordering for $45 at the time of recording, and the Mightstone and Weakstone is pre-ordering for about $25. I don't believe the price of these cards will stay that high, but I've been wrong before. I estimate that the two of them will be about $30 rather than $70. With that assumption in mind, the deck should wind up being about $100. But what kind of deck are we building? As I stated with the Mishra video, we cannot have both Urza Lord Protector and the Mightstone and Weakstone in the Command Zone. We have ways to tutor the Mightstone and Weakstone out of our library, especially since we're in white and blue, and we have ways to protect it once it hits the battlefield. But I didn't want to focus specifically on just that card. I also didn't want to go for a purely stacks deck, despite being an Azorius. And since everyone builds Urza Lord High Artificer as an artifact deck, I wanted to focus on the other two card types in Urza's static ability, instants and sorceries. That's right, this is a $100 budget Azorius Spellslinger deck. But before we get to our deck list, we should keep in mind our checklist. 50 mana sources, usually split between 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp. 10 pieces of card advantage, 8 to 10 pieces of spot removal, 2 to 3 board wipes, 2 pieces of graveyard hate, and 1 sudden I win card. To start, we've got Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Glacial Floodplain, Idyllic Beachfront, Prairie Stream, Temple of Enlightenment, Razortide Bridge, Azorius Guildgate, Tranquil Cove, Scavenger Grounds for Graveyard Hate, Myriad Landscape for additional ramp, Evolving Wilds, and Terramorphic Expanse for color fixing, Six Plains, and 18 Islands. 
For Mana Rocks, we're running Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Talisman of Progress, Azorius Signet, Marble Diamond, Sky Diamond, Mind Stone, Felwar Stone, Thought Vessel, Commander Sphere, Worn Power Stone, and Hedron Archive. Wayfarer's Bauble, and Solemn Simulacrum for Land Ramp, and Sten Paranoid Partisan for additional cost reduction. Our tutors consist of Solve the Equation, Moon Blessed Cleric, an Idyllic Tutor, Wizard Class, and Monk Class both work very well with our strategy, as does Archmage Emeritus, Teferi's Ageless Insight, Frantic Search, Treasure Cruise, Archaeomancer, and Pull From Tomorrow. To help dig through our deck, we've got Consider, Opt, Brainstorm, Preordain, Faithful Mending, Impulse, Curate, Ponder, and Serum Visions. Trust me, this will all make sense in a few minutes. We've got a light counterspell package in Wash Away, Negate, Arcane Denial, Counterspell, Unwind, Rewind, and Mystic Confluence. For spot removal, we've got Swords to Plowshares, Resculpt, Disenchant, Reality Shift, and Generous Gift. Finally, Narset Parter avails for stacks, and Commit Memory for flexibility and additional graveyard hate. Our board wipes consist of Aetherize, Consuming Tide, and Divine Reckoning. Swarm Intelligence doubles all of our instants and sorceries and might be the main enchantment that we tutor for, but the Mirari Conjecture is also a lot of fun in a deck with a lot of instants and sorceries. Wizards of Thay is a wonderful combo piece and leads to some exciting and explosive turns. We've also got some token generators in Tura Kennerud, Sky Knight, Talran Sky Summoner, Murmuring Mystic, and Dosen to Perfection. Niblis of Frost is a newer card, but can be used to slow down decks with big powerful creatures, like Cute Stuff's Dragons. Hullbreaker Horror is basically a win condition, but our real Sun Knight win card is Approach of the Second Sun. So now that we've got our deck list, let's see how it compares to our checklist. 53 mana sources split between 37 lands and 16 pieces of ramp. A little heavy, but we're trying to cast multiple spells per turn fairly early, so that's fine. 11 pieces of card advantage, plus 9 cantrips, 14 pieces of interaction, 3 board wipes, 2 pieces of graveyard hate, 2 sudden eye win cards in Hullbreaker Horror, and Approach of the Second Sun. This deck is a lot of fun to play and not overly oppressive. Which is weird, because this is Urza, right? We could easily add some stacks pieces like Rest in Peace or Jin Gataxia's Progress Tyrant. There are also some pretty awesome mana rocks like Thrawn Dynamo, which is mana neutral with Urza on board, or Gilded Lotus. Better board wipes like Farewell, or Supreme Verdict. Or maybe you wanted to improve the token generation so you add cards like Monastery Mentor, or Shark Typhoon. But if you really want to be mean with this deck, you could go for a turn strategy. And with Urza making each extra turn spell cheaper, you could pop off even faster than other turns decks. But I wanted to show that just because Urza Lord Protector is in your command zone, you don't have to build a mean deck. It can be fun and interactive without being oppressive. But if we're wanting to be on theme, Urza would absolutely stax his opponents out of existence, take infinite turns, and win with a Laboratory Maniac or a Thassa's Oracle. How are you building Urza Lord Protector? Or is he on your kill on sight list? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons, Jiraiya, Waffles, Muffins, Casey, Danny, Nick, Marcus, Black Dragon, 
Phoenix of Ice, Daniel, and Q. You guys are awesome. I post new Commander Deck videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or you can click here to watch additional videos. Also, if you're a fan of anime and manga like I am, feel free to check out my other channel, Musings by Danon. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Commander by Danon.